I'm Nick. And I'm Ben. And we're from UBuild. UBuild was designed by award-winning architect Studio Bark and was first featured on Grand Designs. One of the things I love about working at UBuild is that people always come to us with a wide range of different ideas and ask us if we can use our system to help them. We've engineered a unique modular system that makes the construction process easier for you. We designed it so that people who had very little experience of construction would be able to build things that they could otherwise not have imagined. Basically, we take the hard work out of DIY so you get to do the fun bits. UBuild is designed around circular economy principles. Rather than creating a material, using it and then throwing away, we believe in reusing materials again and again. And so all of our parts come apart, they're bolted together, they're screwed together, which means that you can always take the fixings apart and the individual components can go back to whatever materials they were in the first place. So our system is completely demountable and reusable wherever you go. We source all the best materials, we cut them using our precision machines and we send them all to you in a pack so that all you need to worry about is which order to put them together in. To put together a U-Build box takes around five minutes and that's for someone who doesn't have much experience in construction. Once you've built one box, then the length of time it takes you depends on how complex your project is. So what if you wanted a flexible work from home space? That's easy, we take your dimensions and we put them into our software and it works out the most efficient configuration for your space. Our typical garden pods have a flat roof, but if you wanted something different, you could also put a green roof on top. How about if you wanted a full length window? We can change the cladding on the outside. You can have herringbone, you can have cork. The options are endless. You can customise the pod exactly how you want it. Because the design is modular, the pods can grow as you do. So what might start off as a small home office might get bigger and become a whole house. We like to make our products out of sustainable, non-toxic materials. We use sheep wool insulation or wood fibre insulation, which you can put in with your hands without needing gloves or masks. So it's good for you and good for the planet. So at Ubuild, we've got a really great team. There's a group of us, we come from different backgrounds, we've got different skill sets. There are designers, there are specialists in technical side, there are construction specialists, and there are people who really understand people. Like me. <laughs> <laughs> Be sure to catch us on the FT Weekend Festival. We're going to be speaking with editor Nathan Brooker on all things you build, so we hope to see you there. Wow. Well, let's big it up for Ben, Hannah, and Nick from You Build. I was so impressed. I said to myself, is that my son? <laughs> <laughs> I had to pitch myself. Well, okay. You just said that I was the king blagger, didn't you? I blagged my way. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, okay, <laughs> fantastic. Thank you for that lovely introduction and also for the quiz. Like, I'll be honest with you, there was a couple there where I was like, I think it's C and then it actually was B. So I, I'm not an expert myself in, in terms of architecture, but where I fit into you build, it's kind of an, quite an interesting position. So as Grace, my mum has mentioned, my background is mostly within television. Uh, I've actually done quite a few different jobs. I've worked in a bank, I've worked in an airport, I did market research, what else have done? Quite a few, retail, you name it. But um, I got into sustainable architecture, uh, I think last year, and I've been working for Ubuild now for almost, almost nine months. So how I got into it was quite interesting. So as my mum mentioned, I used to work in Discovery Channel. I was there for almost 10 or over 10 years. Most, most recently, I had a job as a producer. And because of Brexit, you know, we were working within the re like European regions my job got dissolved and I was made redundant. So I thought, you know what, 
I'll try a few different things. And uh, I did, I did voiceover work. I worked in music festivals. I made music videos. I did a few different pieces here and there. And uh, after that, I was like, you know what? I think I'm ready to go back into, into television. And then with lockdown and with the coronavirus, all of the job openings that were there, they just disappeared. So then I was out of work for like five months and I was like, ooh, I, this doesn't suit me. I was kind of itching for an opportunity. And I thought, you know what? Like I've got a really good friend of mine who, you know, he's working in an industry that I admire. Why don't I do some volunteering for him? So I worked with Nick and we volunteered together and we created like PPE masks to go to like different hospitals to help people with the coronavirus. And um, through chatting to Nick, and understanding his business we ended up working together and that was nine years later and now what I do is I'm a, the brand strategist for you build where I get to use a lot of the experience that I built up working in television working with different types of people understanding trends understanding audience behaviors understanding branding and now I kind of bring that to the table and focus more on the client side of things I work with Hannah and the two of us can bring our either technical skills and client ability together and come kind of answer inquiries. We get to work with the clients directly, understand what they're wanting to do with the U build themselves and make their, you know, hopefully make the design dreams into a reality. And it's just a really rewarding industry and a very rewarding job. It's quite nice to, to be in an environment where I'm actually, you know, seeing the difference that you're making in people's lives. Whereas before I was working for a big company, making a big company bigger and richer. Whereas now I'm working, you know, in a very sustainable environment where I feel like I'm giving back. I'm able to use my, my powers for good. And uh, yeah, so that's, that's, that's sort of like my, my history in, in Ubuild. And yeah, I've really enjoyed it and I'm excited to see where this takes me. So I'll hand over to, to Nick to just give him a brief description about what he does and uh, yeah, his role within the company. Thanks, Ben. Um, that's a nice, nice intro. Um, and, and also, thanks, Grace. Uh, the, um, I think the, the introduction to the, the history of architecture, I've never, I've never seen that um, done so succinctly before. It's um, it, brilliant. The uh, framing the future, I'll remember that. <laughs> um, so my background is, um, I'm, I'm an architect. Um, and that is something um, where you have to, you have to study for that um, at university. Um, it takes seven years, um, believe it or not. So it's about the same amount of time as being a doctor, um, but we don't get to operate on people. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, so anyway, um, I remember at school, I was very interested in design. Um, so uh, we, it used to be called design and technology then, but, you know, basically um, the more kind of uh, I didn't really like art so much. I was more kind of technical. So I would, I, I like drawing straight lines and, you know, building models and those kind of things. Um, and um, I also liked uh, computing. So I did um, IT. That was one of my sort of choices uh, as well. Um, and those are the main ones, really. You don't need to be that good at maths. You, um, people say you do, but the most thing you need to have is a good understanding of space. Um, and be good at emails because that's what most jobs are as well these days. <laughs> um, so yeah, from from that, um, I yeah, so I studied studied for seven years, um, and I realised um, that when I first started working, um, that what I was really interested in was the environment. So I remember going and working in Abu Dhabi, um, and working on a big um, sort of building there, and it had the 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 um, building was in the middle of the desert um, so you know outside the temperature was like 30 degrees or 40 degrees but inside they were keeping the the temperature like 18 degrees with air conditioning and it the air conditioning unit needed to be so big that they had to build another building to put the air conditioning unit in it and I remember at the time thinking this is just horrible. I don't want to be part of this. Um, I want to do something where I'm trying to help the world. <laughs> so um, I specialized in sustainable architecture, which um, I think is, as, as Grace was saying, a good um, sort of short explanation of what sustainable means. 
is it means good for people and good for the planet. So building things which are suit our needs now, but are not going to cause uh, climate change in, in the future, which I'm, I'm sure most of you have heard of. Um, so, so yeah, that's, that's what I'm interested in. About seven years ago, um, myself and um, a couple of others, we started a company called Studio Bark, which is um, an architecture practice. And we were focusing on architecture, which looks good, but is also sustainable. Um, the studio buck is uh, we wanted to try and find a way of making architecture available to more people because usually architects are involved with quite expensive projects and so not you know you might go through your whole life and never employ an architect um, but we wanted to make it so that more people could access architecture and have you know cool buildings um, in their in their homes and so we came up with UBuild, and that is a way of using some of the clever technology um, to make complex architecture simple and affordable for people. Um, and so we set up UBuild as a separate company last year, um, which I am running. Um, and our aim is, yeah, to make construction simple. So um, we have worked with um, school children, we have worked with community groups, we've worked with families, uh, we've worked with companies, um, because in effect what we've built is like big Lego. Um, so if you imagine you can, um, you can put it together um, in the same way as you would put Lego blocks, so it's quite easy for most people to understand what you could do with it. Um, that's probably enough from me, um, we can talk a bit more, um, but I'll pass over to Hannah. Thank you. It was really nice to hear your sort of school childhood story as well, Nick, because I haven't heard that before. Um, and uh, so, yes, yeah, so I began in school. I was very interested in art and science. Um, I didn't know what I wanted to do. And I felt I didn't like want I didn't want to specialise as well very early on. So I, I, look, I, I chose architecture because it felt quite varied and it felt like you could learn a lot of different things um, and I definitely think it's lived up to that. Um, I'm still interested in art and science and I think they come together really nicely in architecture um, and then something I learned when I was doing the degree was just about how how the spaces that we live in and the buildings we live in shape our lives um, and shape our communities and who who bring like how we're brought together I think is affected by the spaces that we're in and so I became especially interested in that kind of aspect the the people side I guess and the the uh, social side of, of the architecture and the buildings that we inhabit every day um so at the moment I'm specializing similar to Nick in sustainable architecture because I think again like it has a, a impact on the way in which we live and living in healthy buildings affects our quality of life, our happiness, our ability to get on and, and um, interact with others in different ways and possibly even learn, learn better. Um, and I find that, yeah, I find those things very interesting. Um, so the sustainability side comes into that quite heavily. Um, and so I came to you build and what I've find really interesting about UBuild is the idea that we can start to make these buildings and spaces more accessible to people that don't understand or haven't studied architecture because as Nick said it's it's it is seven years which is a long time um, and I think it's important that people in communities and can have an understanding of how to build their own homes and how then to maintain that and if they wanted to make an extra room they can they can edit these things as their families families grow um, and as they have children so kind of similar to how in the olden days we used to do it where we'd build a mud house and then someone has a child and you build an extra room on it and it's it's a very old idea I think of this flexibility of homes and this kind of organicness that I think is really interesting so 
yeah, that's what brought me to you build. And I'm yeah, uh, very excited to keep doing that kind of, yeah, the modular, the modular construction. It's simple. Yeah. Um, you don't need as many tools to build it. Um, and there's lots of, there's a fun the, and a learning process that can be had whilst you're building as well, which I'm, um, I'm also a very practical person. Um, and I knew that I'd always wanted to do a job that had a sort of practical side to it so not always just being in an office um, and we do spend a lot of time on our computers nowadays but every now and then we do get out and we and we get to build something which um, is also a great learning curve you meet new people and yes yeah, so that's I like working outdoors basically and that's it's nice to be able to create things with your hands it's very um, satisfying kind of work so yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you for that, Hannah and Nick. Yeah, I think one thing that I've really noticed about working for you, Build, is that you really do get to see the whole scale project very quickly. You know, people who have this idea, they've got a space in their garden or, you know, a vacant office, and then they come to you with a request. And then we kind of think, you know, how can we make this person's like, architectural dreams come true with very simple tools you know so what I've never been in a position where I've been able to be part of the beginning the middle and then the end and then go and see the usage of that thing that I've created you know within the space of two or three months and I think it's amazing to do that it just goes to show that if you do have an idea or dream or passion you know, and you, you, you put the work in yourself, you know, you can make it a reality in relatively a short amount of time. I didn't know that was possible. <laughs> Over to Nick to talk about that. Okay, cool. So we thought um, we would set you guys a challenge um, of building your very own landmark building um, using um, a piece of paper. So I don't know if, um, if, if Grace has already given everyone the challenge of going but if, if you haven't already does everyone have at least one piece of paper um and does everyone have a heavy object like a can of beans or cup or something yeah it, it, ben watch out your cup doesn't smash <laughs> we want something that won't break if it falls off i don't want to get in trouble with anyone's with anyone's uh, family um Okay, so the simple challenge is, and I should say, obviously, the other thing you need is a flat surface to build on. Um, your challenge is to get the can of beans um, suspended above the floor as high as possible using just one piece of paper. Okay, so um, so imagine... I've, I've, got my, I've got my can of beans. How long have they got to do it? Huh? How long have they got to do it? Oh, we finished um, at six-ish, so... I reckon I reckon everyone's going to need about sort of ten minutes. I might ten minutes, OK. Well, should we so, say five minutes? Be... Sorry? Should we say five minutes? Five OK, minutes. five ten minutes. minutes. Okay. So, yeah. What, what yeah. I'll just say is, so obviously the, uh, the, 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 simplest, the simplest way of, of um, elevating a can of beans off the floor is to put the can of beans <laughs> on the piece of paper yeah. but you're only going to be elevating it by the thickness of a piece of paper so you're not going to get very many points um i've i've designed some structures myself and if anyone can build a tower which is as tall as mine taller than mine then you get a prize <laughs> so right. this is interesting hey, let me get my can of beans i'm coming back so um let's get this right does anybody know what they're doing? <laughs> no, do you know what you're doing? Don't, don't open the beans. Are we allowed to use sellotape or no, no. no sticky tape? No, just one piece of paper. Oh, I see. Right, yeah. right, right. Um, right. I, think, so, I think John's got the idea. Well, the idea. But... Okay, um, I, I don't... Uh, no, don't give, don't give it away. So everyone, make sure your camera is not showing your... Because otherwise everyone... All right everyone then, all right. Just, John, don't, yeah, don't give it away. it's going to be a secret. Otherwise we're just going to get um, people people uh, converging on the same design. Right, okay. Design yeah, yeah. To make it... I just make a tall... Yeah, make something to stand Okay, okay. But the trick is... Make it strong enough. Make it strong enough. 
This is really interesting. Ooh. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna move my. Um, I'm gonna move my camera in a minute so I can show show everyone. Is um, Ben? Are you keeping track of time? I, I'm not sure if I can't remember how long we've had. No, you've. You're fine. You're yet. fine. Yeah, don't worry. You're fine. You've had about two minutes. Time will be the time master. Need okay. another five minutes, I reckon. Yeah. Well, so so we got another five minutes from now. Oh, no. there you see. <laughs> yes. Sir. It's not that you easy. It's got to be strong enough. Oh it's no! Got to be strong. Please. How the hell? I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay. It's good to see. I'm just going to take a photograph of what John's doing. John's done something. Let me put it that way. It's I'm not sure if it's tall yeah. enough. No, it may not be. <laughs> but he's done something. <laughs> All of you send me your pictures. Yeah. Just send me your your designs. Well, I'm impressed. I don't know how, but John's managed to do it. Oh, wow, Carolyn. Sh she shouldn't show the... Carolyn, you're sh I don't even think Carolyn can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone... Oh, it's, it's all good. Maybe, maybe should, we just, should we just get everyone to share their screen? Yeah, let's, their yeah, yeah. Just leave it where it is. I think I can get it in the camera. Hold on. Yeah. Let me just open up the screen. There you go. Can you put yours in there? Who's done it? Well, I can't see her. I have. Who's done it? Let's have a look and see. Well, we can sort of like, there you go. Where is it, John? Hold on a minute. No, keep it there. It's coming. That's our one. Can you see? Can you see our one? Yeah. yeah. How, how, how tall is that compared to the beans? It's about half the size of the tin or two, or two thirds. Just, a, yeah, two thirds of the height of the tin. Nice. Look oh. at that. We've got, we got uh, twin towers over there. Let's just see the rest of them. Yeah. Let's see the rest of them. Oh my gosh, you've managed to do it. Oh, wow. How yeah. impressive. Carolyn, Ka well done. Kyra. We can't see yours. You can want to show the structure. Well done. Well done, wow, Kyra. Kyra! Wow, that's good. It's all right. When I when that's I when good. I edit, I'll just put the. Uh, oh gosh, Rita Gina says hers fell down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this this is why we were saying it's it's uh, the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Is, oh, is, 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 I a see. Good, a good precedent. <laughs> I see. Right, it's very interesting. Honestly, it's a oh, very I, good activity. Can't and Naya, what think... about yours? Oh, who's this? Anjan. Well done, Anjan. Yeah. And, and 20 centimetres, but it's a mini speaker. Wow, mini speaker. Wow. Naya, so not, have you done one? Can we see your one? Let's right. have a look. Any good, Naya? Wow, wow look at good. that. Did you say, Regina, yours has fallen down? Oh, Marie, I like your one. You like baked beans as well. Sorry, Regina. What you happened, can, Regina? You can do it. You laugh. You laugh too much. You probably blew it down with your laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Hannah, how tall is your one? I didn't laugh wow. so much. Chris actually did it. The impossible. Well, Chris he is. Made, a, Chris is. I can show you what Chris has done. You oh see. my God! It's gone. Okay. I think John is trying to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> Grace, yes, Chris did this and made yes, that oh. um, tin, oh, not big tin, small tin mm. sit on it, yeah. and then I knocked it over. Oh, <laughs> I see, yeah. I put on it. That's Mom, a really clever idea. Mom, I just sent you mine. I yeah. think I won. I think I won. I sent it to you on what? Uh, you you sent it to me. I have a picture. I'm gonna send the photo to. Okay, think, let's have a look and see. Like look at my one though. I think I won. And why did you win? Uh, what you mean? <laughs> why did you win? What do you mean? Show I'm, them. I'm gonna try and put it in the uh, and oh, show me. I think <laughs> I won. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna send it, Kyra. Oh, I like Kyra. yours, Kyra. Well done. Oh, I need to see yours, Bench, because seriously, why did you want? <laughs> well, you'll see, after oh, being with people for it. like nine months, I feel like I've got the right... I'm going to, ben, I'm, I'm going to show it online, yeah? yeah? Hold on. I, feel, you know, I, think, I think you're a bit deluded, Ben, actually. <laughs> well, it's at least second place. 
Regina's oh. sending me hers I need to as see well. yours, seriously. I know, mine is, no, I know mine, I've got nice. Oh, wow, look at this. Oh, one half more structure, yeah. you know. Like, oh, my gosh. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Now John is showing off. This is getting <laughs> This is crazy. Oh, no. Ooh, I'm worried it's going to collapse on top of me in a minute. Yeah. What a, an exciting activity. Oh, wow. Amazing. So, we still have... We still have about twenty minutes. What can we do next? Well, I was gonna, I was gonna show you the, wow. I was gonna show you the ones I built, yes, and then please. Um, yeah. yes, please, yes, please. <laughs> yeah, I can't can believe be, this. Be, this is incredible. Be, Look at right. this. Big one, but unbelievable. <laughs> I, I done a picture. Wait, I'm yeah. Right. So I, I start, I started off, I started off in the same way. Oh, with, yeah. uh, I think <laughs> some people I have this. Sure one. That one, but I don't know. So the idea behind this is that what we're trying to do is we're trying to make it so that the paper is has stiffness. Yeah. And so by putting the folds in the paper, mm. it makes it much stiffer. We're also, you, so yeah, by, yeah. So, so I think some of you have done this already. Yes. You can see yes. there yeah. that um, nice, yeah. this is a very simple shape. So actually this yeah. is like, you know, when you use it, when you make a fan yeah. Um, yeah. like this, that's yeah. why it works because the, these are like ribs. They're like, um, in a, mm -hmm. in a bird's wing or mm -hmm. like, you know, like a skeleton. So, so you can actually mm -hmm. make something quite strong like that. Obviously the downside is because we're folding it lots of times, mm. um, then, then it doesn't get very high. Okay. So the next, the next thing was I did something a bit like some of you, get, some of you did. Oh, so I folded mm -hmm. the paper in half yep. and then rolled it up. Um, and so obviously mm. that worked quite well. Yeah. Um, and so I thought, well, if I folded it in half and it was really easy, then I wonder if I could do it in a different way. So I rolled up the paper this way. That's what I tried. Um, okay. And that was my idea at the end. Yeah, sure enough. Ah! It was still strong. Very it's, good. Yeah, it's good. But then very, very given good. that that was so oh, God. successful, mm -hmm. I thought I'd try rolling the paper the other way. Yeah. Okay, you can roll the paper as well. Yeah. Oh. Oh, <laughs> it hasn't quite worked. Or it'll work. <laughs> yeah, that's the highest it can go. Look at, look at that. Wow. So the, very key, good. the key is to try and make sure, and I did do it before. Mm -hmm. The yeah. key is to try and make sure that the um, <laughs> that the paper doesn't unfold. Yeah. If it okay. Unfolds, it needs to unfold in the ring. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Well Excellent. So I think. I'm not sure. Did um, Hannah? Is that the same? Is that the same as as you? Yeah, I think me and and Kyra possibly had the That's same. Really good. Yeah. So does anybody win a prize? Wait, wait, wait! You haven't shown my image yet. I think <laughs> everyone needs. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna put them all up in in the thingy. Just bear with me. Oh, okay. Literally. Very impressive work, everybody. Yeah, <laughs> I think you're gonna be you're gonna be shocked when you see Ben. <laughs> That's yeah, everyone will be shocked. <laughs> You'll be dumbfounded. Away, ben. I think so. I think, <laughs> <I'm> gonna... <laughs> I think you're going to be dumbfounded. No, right, I'm just... Ingenuity went into that, so like, all, yeah. all of you hold your breaths. Did everyone find the challenge? Did you find it quite fun? Yeah. I've never had... Yeah, it was interesting to find out which ways would work and which ways didn't. Yeah. Mm. Right, Ben, I'm just about... Hold your breath, everybody. Yeah, right, I'm just going to... I'm just going to show you Ben's wonderful masterpiece okay you sit down and you're you know you're comfortable can you see there can you see it very good <laughs> <laughs> well it's off the ground anyway i think i won no eh? yeah are you serious well. are you are you, you won away wait wait look here marie can can't even see it <laughs> <laughs> you won what you uh, smash the damn thing and make like a ball to make it harder and put the damn thing. Innovative in. idea, no?
Right, what can you see? Can you see the photos? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so here's some of the projects that we store uh, for you build. And as you can see, we've got lots of interesting ones with like people with mallets and you've got Hannah in an amazing box. This is some of the materials that we use. It's really <laughs> fun. We have a great time at work. As you can see, I'm smiling with one of our <laughs> And I'll be able to show you as well this building quickly before we end. Wow. But we actually, yeah, you build helped the client come up with an idea. They came to us with a distinct idea. Mm -hmm. And as you see in the background, these are lots of you build boxes. As and Nick said earlier, it's people have described it as Lego for adults. And as oh, you can wow. see, you kind of build these boxes and you make them into different parts of the building. That does make sense, yes. So an exciting project that we worked on last year was the building of some drums. Now, <laughs> we were working in a warehouse in East mm -hmm. London and one of our U-Build boxes was just, you know, laid outside and I think it was just in meanwhile use. We were going to use it for something, but we just hadn't quite found the purpose for it yet. Mm -hmm. Someone in a warehouse who happens to be a drummer looked at one of the boxes and he went over to Nick and he was like, Oh, do you mind if I take this with me? We had no idea what he was going to use it for. So he, he took it away and he brought it back. And he was like, you know, I've, I've modified it slightly, slightly and I've turned it into a drum. And we were like, oh, wow, let's have a look at this. And he used drum with it and it was really, really impressive. And then he got in touch with some of his colleagues uh, and he got them to build loads of these different drums for all. We got, you build to build a series of 10 drums. And then loads of the children who took part in the project ended up painting them. And then there was a, an actual event that happened last year when they actually drummed and used uh, the drums that we made for them as mm -hmm. part of uh, an expose of what they do, which was great. So they came to us again with an idea and uh, we were able to make it work for them. Mm -hmm. I, I thought we had no idea what, that we can do it. So here's, a little bit of a, the process of what we went through in order to make it happen. As you can see, this is a, a little picture here where we're showcasing um, the, the, the printing uh, format. Yeah. It's like a massive giant 3D printer where it kind of laser prints um, through wood. And mm -hmm. as you can see, this is different designs that have come out. Mm -hmm. Which were inputted on a computer. And uh, yeah, the, these are the designs that actually will make the drum. So as you can see, Nick and I were making these in the warehouse. There's a picture of me just being silly, of course. <laughs> and if I go back. I you've got I'm you've got a video of you playing the drum. Do you want do. To There's actually a video of the warehouse of us just making music. So come on then. The and I think, you know when we come out of lockdown in the summer, when you've got time, it'll be really <laughs> fantastic if we can do one in the park. If we can do an outdoor Of course, we'll do that. You've got it on camera now, so it has to be brilliant, happen. excellent. Um, <laughs> so here's some footage of us just being silly, but also making music in the warehouse. This is how we care. Tim, the audience to Go ask ahead. you questions. I, mean, I said, absolutely great presentation, guys. Really good. Both ideas are really, really good. What I wanted to know are that uh, those buildings that you can make, those blocks, whatever you want to call it. Sorry, I forgot what they're called. Can they go out into the Caribbean? Could they withhold weather, storm, or anything like that? Um, yeah, maybe I'll answer this one. So um, we haven't built them in the Caribbean yet but we, they are designed with a structural engineer as well as us for architects. So they can test different wind loads um, and different strengths. So we've not built one that has to withstand a hurricane yet. So I don't know the answer, but um, we've built them in Australia um, and we've built them in Switzerland, um, up in a mountain. Um, so we know that they're very strong, but the idea is in, rather than us, making them in England and then sending them over there 
what we do instead is we find a local um, a manufacturing place, say in the Caribbean, and then we just send our designs over and then they can print them out there. So that, it's, um, oh. that, that's, 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 that's it's definitely possible, but all they would need is just to have good access to sheets of plywood. That's all, that's all they need. So that could be a good idea for, to get out there for young people or people who are kind of disenfranchised have an opportunity to create something out of this sort of sustainable product. The second yeah. part of the question, could you could it be possible to build like a little small, I don't know how you describe it, a little porch almost at the back of a house? I um, mean, or somewhere you could just pit, fit, store some like and soundproof it to make a little like a little studio type thing. And it looks really, really interesting. And how affordable is affordable? Yeah, so um, I think it's it's fair to say that, you know, if you were to buy some um, wood just from like the local builders merchant and like knock it up yourself, then you can probably build something cheaper if you have building skills, because obviously we have to pay for the plywood, but then we also have to pay for the machine that cuts it out. But if the, oh, yeah. the problem if the idea is that people who don't understand how to build then we think this is the um, most affordable way of, of building sustainably um so yes you could put it on the back of a building we have had structures which are on the back of a building um and yeah you could make it small as well so the the, the images that ben's showing at the moment these are sort of separate um recording or they're, they're studios at the back of someone's garden but we have also built them attached to a building. Okay, and finally, something like a, a three by three foot by four foot, something like that, structure or two by four. Would it be something like, you know, like in the regions of thousands, hundreds? So I've got no idea of pricing. So you said you said three foot by four foot. Yeah, something like that, for instance. Okay, so. That's about, we calculate in meters squared. So that's about 1.33 meters. So something like that would probably cost around one or 2,000 pounds. Um, okay. So it's expensive compared to like, I don't know, um, not building a building, but to, to build, building buildings are expensive. And so, um, yeah, we, we usually say it's around 1,300 pounds for every square meter of floor area, something like that. Okay. Um, and because we're on WAPI, do we get mates rates? Yeah. Well, that, that, <laughs> if um, we do actually have for community projects, um, then then we do we do offer it at cost price. So you know we can make it cheaper than that, but that's how much we would sell it for. So in fact, um, at, at some point, Ben, you could probably show our website um, where 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 people can go on and they can see their own. They can see their own designs. They can um, see some designs, some different ones. I don't know if you if you want to show that at some point. Ben. Very quickly, it would be really lovely, wappy young people, if in the near future you can think about a design. Who knows? We might even collaborate on something. Think of a design and let's put uh, it to the ch a challenge to you, Bill, to say if they can turn it into something. Before we go, has anybody anybody got any questions for Hannah? I wanted to ask something. Sorry, I just wondered about the foundation when you build it, um, what kind of preparation is there for a foundation? Are the, these buildings insulated? Okay. Any of you would like to answer that? Hannah, did you want to answer this one? Um, yeah, I can do it. Yes, we, so we insulate, our buildings come with insulation um, and we choose sheep's wool because it's sustainable um, and it's very easy to work with a lot of the insulations that the traditional ones are, are very itchy. They can be um, sort of glass fibre or rock wool and they're not very nice to work with. So we, we use sheep's wool, which is okay. comes from a, as an offcut from the industry anyway, from oh, often right. making jumpers. So it's, yeah. it's unused. Um, and I think that was the last part about foundations. Yeah, which, I just wonder what kind of foundation you would need for, is it concrete you need to have under it? You don't necessarily, it depends on the size of the project. Um, obviously because the amount of weight will change, but so for some of the smaller projects you can use, um, like for example, the garden, garden shed size, you can use um, paving slabs or shed bases, which is more 
it's more low impact so it's like a compacted ground and then as long as you have a, a well compacted ground you can lay paving slabs and then the building on top of that so you don't always need concrete but it, de it depends on the site and the type of ground so that's okay. something that we talk about during the consultation process with with people yeah. and help them choose what what's right for them yeah yeah oh wow thank you thank you just just say your question Prissy. i just want to say thank you for the opportunity because i've learned so much but i wanted to ask if there's like any volunteering or work did you hear that nick and ben and uh, just my my niece is doing an actual design uh course and she wants to go to uni so is there any volunteering that she can do do you take on volunteers at all that's a good question I think it depends on the project that we're doing. At the moment, we haven't really been doing anything like that just because of kind of lockdown restrictions. Um, we did have some students um, who, who did a work experience with Studio Bark, but it was all remote and it wasn't very, I don't think it was very practical. So I, I sort of think that maybe once people are allowed to go outside, if okay. we're working on a if we're working on a community project yes. where it, you know it's lots of people building for for a good cause, then then yeah, we'd be very happy to to have people along. Um, or you know, we've already I think we've already said Grace that we'd be happy to to have like a um, an event with 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 Wappy or Wappy, yes. sorry, where, we, um, where we sort of you know br brought some boxes with us and made something. Definitely, fun. we'll look forward to that when we escape get let out of this um you know kind of lockdown um we're almost at the end i just thought I, you just my my daughter here effie she just said what so ben can build us some kind of gazebo with his Not gazebo, what is a it? balcony outside so um, i'm a, we're gonna hire you don't worry we're gonna hire you proper 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 and we, summer you just wasted all this time <laughs> Instead of buying it you're telling me instead of buying it i can actually get it done That's so never mind Okay, so listen, um, do you want to show your website before we say a big up clap? We're all going to unmute and say a big up clap. It's been amazing. I so this is the current website at the moment. So you can put in your dimensions, 3 by 2.4 by 2.4. And as Nick mentioned earlier, in the architectural world, everyone's is everything's done in millimetres and metres. I didn't know that. I didn't know a difference between a millimetre and a litre before. So it's all been a learning experience for me. It's great. You put in a type of material, the material you want, whether it's going to be spruce, different types of plywood. And then, as you can see, this image here currently changes. So you can visualise the kind of pod that you would like to have using our U-Build system. But what we've done is we wanted to bring the new website to a new level and uh, this is an unveiling in fact this is completely new information that no one has seen apart from us that we wanted to showcase today it's a new Can website we, going to be launched question. very very soon so as you can see this is our trademark box it talks about the different uses of you build and what is specific about it it's easy to build it's good for the environment and as you can see here it's very flexible you come to us and we can make, you know, you build work for whatever design dream that you've got. Or we hope to anyway. Excellent. Well, and, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, and then these, as you can see, there's the different uses for the, for the types of pods and, you know, different indoor and outdoor uses for our you build process. As you can see, there's lots of different watercolours that we've worked on to showcase the different uses for them. But this is a little, a little glimpse anyway. We'll, I'll get, I'll give the link to Grace and she'll send it out to all of you for when the website gets launched. Fantastic. Well, I would like to say a big thanks. We would love to have you back in the next few months. We know how busy you are, so we're not putting any pressure on you, but we'd love to do it again, maybe on another day so we can get, have more young people come on a different day. Yeah, but thank you. Naya has one question and so two more questions have got their okay. hands up. So if we can just give those, so we can have Naya and Quincy and then whoever else wants to ask them, we'll finish. Okay. So Naya, yeah. So what was your question, Naya? Thank you. Um, how does you, the materials you, you use to um, um, build the structures and stuff um, interact with and help um, sustainability and deforestation with wood? Ooh, I think Nick might be better mm. that question. Is that okay, Nick? Yeah, well, no, this it's is a great a, this question, is a, though. It's really a very, good very good that. question. Okay, so I think what we say is when we start by building something, by building anything, um, then we create 
some kind of impact to the world. So if we if we dig up mud to make a, a mud hut, we will be damaging the soil. If we make it out of wood, then we'll be damaging a tree. If we make it out of bricks, again, it's clay, so we're digging out of the ground. And all of the things that we um, use, use energy. And so the reason that we have chosen wood is because um, the, the trees that the wood comes from, if you, if you have it in a sustainable forest, then for one tree that they cut, then they plant two trees. And so it means that overall there are more trees. But I think there are probably still some people who would say, well, hang on, that tree was there and they were, that was growing there before you were. So why, why should you be able to cut that down? So the problem is if we, if we think in this way, then we can't do anything. We would be living on a, a field with no um, <laughs> shelter. So if you, if you accept the fact that we have to use something, um, we think that trees are the best ones because in the tree's lifetime, it absorbs um, CO2, carbon dioxide, um, and therefore it's not using so much energy. But it's a very, very good question because very good question. even using wood does cause some deforestation. So very, very, um, very good architectural question. <laughs> Can I make one further yes, point on that? Yes, of course. Is, is that we want to be very careful about the type of wood that we choose, because as you know, we all hear about the rainforest um, yeah. and we hear about tropical plantations where um, there are lots of very important protected species. Um, and we don't want to choose wood which comes from any of those. So um, if you look at a piece of plywood and it's kind of pinky, then chances are that it's come from a tropical forest. Um, and so all of the wood that we use, um, it comes from Europe um, and it's a very light color and it's a fast growing tree that you can plant again and again. And they plant it specially, they grow them specially so that there's not like, they're not full of um, animals and they're not full of biodiversity. So I think that's really, really important. Like which forest it comes from matters. Yay! Thank you. 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 Thank Thank you, Nick. Thank you, Nick. Thank you for what you're doing, Hannah. Thank you, Hannah. Thank you so much. It's been amazing. Oh, we'll, 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 we'll get the video to you as well. You can use it okay. for your own we'll, we'll we get, once we get permissions from our parents. Okay? Yeah. Thank you, Naya. Thank you. Bye, Naya. Thank you. Bye, Naya. You're lucky. They don't, they don't even, I don't even see Quincy that night, but he's coming because of you. Look at oh, that. Thank thank you. You. Bye, Nick. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, 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 Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Hooray! Thank, 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 thank you. You've been amazing. Thank you. We're about to thank say you. goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll see you people again. Thank you. That was amazing. Remember for all the, all the mom, all the moms or those who play a mum role. Happy Mothering Sunday when it comes. Thank you. Let's remember all the mothers that are not even around. And you Let's just be so very grateful for all the great women in the world. Wonderful. Yeah. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you so much. So proud. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, Nick. So thank you for what you're thank doing, you, Hannah. Hannah. Thank you so much. It's been amazing. Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll get the video to you as well. You can use it so for your own we'll, we'll get, once we get permissions from our parents. Okay? Yeah. Thank you, Naya. Thank you. Bye, Naya. You're lucky. They don't, they don't even, I don't even see Quincy that night, but he's coming because of you. Look at oh, that. Thank you. Bye, Nick. Thank you. Bye, Bye, Bye everyone. Bye,